This is a Saucony Triumph 19. Checkered flag pattern aside, it looks almost identical to its predecessor. So is this update worth getting or is this an iteration that can be skipped? It's time to lace up the Triumph 19 and take them for a run. Six point two eight miles, nine minutes, fifteen seconds from our one hundred and forty one beats per minute today. Going for a nice and easy run for the first time in the Saucony Triumph nineteen. Now, before I give you my thoughts on how this shoe fared on its first run, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for it. However, no one's paying me to make this video or to use this shoe, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now, with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Saucony Triumph 19. First, let's go over some specs on this shoe. This shoe is a 32 and a half millimeter stack height shoe in the heel with an eight millimeter drop, giving us 24 and a half millimeters of Power Run Plus midsole foam that looks like Boost and behaves a lot like Boost, but from what we've seen in the past couple of years, is definitely being used in a much better way than Boost has been used. It's the same foam that the Triumph has for, for several years now to great success. On top of that midsole layer, there is a top sole, which is in between the insole and the midsole layer that's also a foam material. I'm not exactly sure what the composition of that material is, but it's there to add a little bit of extra softness, a little bit extra plushness to this Max Cousin shoe. On the outsole, we have Saucony's XT900 outsole and rubber, and it's the same rubber that we've seen in prior iterations of the Triumph that has served very well in previous iterations of the shoe. Lots of grip and a high amount of durability. The upper is where there's most of the significant changes for this year. This year, it has trimmed down quite a bit. A lot of the puffiness has gone away, which makes me extremely happy. I just don't love puffy shoes even in the max cushion category. My hypothesis for a while has been you can have a very comfortable, a very plush shoe without necessarily putting memory foam or padding or just all this sort of stuff in the upper. And they've certainly stripped out quite a bit of it this year. The tongue is very minimally padded, at least for a max cushion shoe, and especially compared to the ultra puffy tongue of the Triumph 18 of last year. And there is some padding in this checkerboard pattern uh, material around the heel cup uh, and up to this Achilles flare, but it is a restrained amount, again, for a max cushion shoe. Uh, and I like the fact that they are consistently trying to trim down as much of the foam as possible while still maintaining a very comfortable fitting upper. The part that I am most excited about is that the upper has changed from last year's, but I'm glad for the new update because this upper looks and feels a lot like the upper that we saw in the Endorphin Speed last year. It was a much more breathable material and a much more stretchy and comfortable material than the upper that we saw on the Triumph 18 of last year. So I'm very happy to see that. Uh, in the back, there is a little bit of structure. It's quite rigid right here uh, in this heel cup area. So that's going to aid with some motion control and just keep you feeling locked in as you're running in the shoe. And all this put together with those changes, even though the midsole has staged largely the same, the upper changes have resulted in a weight loss of almost one entire ounce. And this shoe's coming in at a weight of 10.2 ounces for my men's US size 
nine. So with those specs out of the way, what was it like to run in the shoe? The midsole, I think is pretty much identical to the Triumph 18 from last year. I'm having a hard time kind of figuring out how it's different, but if you did not run in the Triumph 18 or any of the other Triumphs in the past few years, it feels very comfortable to run in. And I mentioned that Power Run Plus is a material that kind of like looks and behaves a lot like Boost. And I'll say that in this Triumph 19, I feel like it's a shoe that the Ultra Boost should have been, but isn't because we've got 24 and a half millimeters of stack height of that Power Run Plus midsole foam in the forefoot, I feel like I'm getting plenty of cushion and shock absorption in the heel, and I'm also getting plenty of shock absorption and cushioning in the forefoot as well. So I feel like it's a really well executed shoe for either a max cushion shoe or even for a heavily cushioned daily trainer kind of fitting along that spectrum, not quite in the daily trainer category, but getting pretty close to it while also still maintaining a great level of comfort. But because this material has a lot of those boost-like properties, it still feels pretty springy. It feels pretty responsive when you're running in it. So that way it's not like you're getting stuck in mush. You'll be able to hit the ground and bounce right off. There isn't a rocker in this shoe, even though it does have quite a bit of stack height to it. But I think because of that eight millimeter drop, you are still getting a little bit of assistance to make sure that you're not getting too mired down in extra squishiness. So it helps with the turnover quite a bit to be able to run in this shoe. I had a great time running in this shoe today for my easy run. And I feel like for most people's daily training for their everyday runs this is gonna be a fantastic option. For recovery runs, it's definitely gonna be a fantastic option as well. And for those long Longest runs that are out there, especially now that it's an ounce lighter. I feel like this is going to be a shoe that a lot of people reach for for those long runs as they're getting ready to hit those half marathon and marathon training blocks this summer and later into the fall. Moving to the outsole, it's that same XT900 compound, so not a lot of changes to talk about in it. But again, if you haven't run in it before, it's very grippy lots of traction and lots of tread on here last year in the Triumph 18 and in the Triumph 17 before that. The, the outsole rubber held up very well, is a very durable material, but there's not so much of it. It's not so thick that it takes away from the sensation of the midsole foam that's in there. So it does a good job of striking a balance between durability and also performance. The upper is where I feel like there's the real only real changes in this shoe. And I also think that those upper changes are pretty good. I'm very impressed with it. I'm more surprised and I'm happier with this update than I thought I was going to be. Cause looking at it, it looked like it was pretty much the same shoe as a Triumph 18. But I do think that these are meaningful updates in addition to the weight loss that we've seen in terms of taking an ounce off of the weight from last year's version. It's also still very comfortable, but it's also much more breathable. I ran in the Triumph 18 in the winter and it was a great winter shoe because that upper just didn't breathe at all. It just felt padded even aside from the tongue just along the sides of the foot and on the toe box everything felt very padded and it didn't feel like it could breathe. I wouldn't want to be running in the Triumph 18 in the summer. It would just feel like a very very hot shoe. The Triumph 17 kind of felt like that too. It just had so much puffy padding on it that it just got very very hot. This year we have a mesh that is much more breathable, lots of perforations in it. It has that similar style and also function as the upper that we saw on the Endorphin Speed of last year, which was one of my favorite shoes from 2020. So very happy to see that kind of like technology trickling down from the Endorphin series down into the Triumph. And it also make it make much more sense because Saucony sent me the entire Endorphin series for 2021 in the checkered flag colorway, as well as this Triumph. And it didn't really quite make sense to me at first as to why is there now kind of three Endorphin shoes and then the Triumph with this uh, checker flag pattern. But given that the upper and some of the technology from the Endorphin series is now starting to trickle down into the Triumph, uh, it's starting to make a lot more sense and I'm definitely enjoying it. The upper felt nice and roomy which was a nice surprise as well. And it felt much more breathable. Uh, so that way it was suitable, I think, for summer running. So I'm really enjoying the changes that are there. The fact that they've also taken out 
puffiness from the tongue is another big plus in my book. The only thing that I didn't love, and I think this is, comes down to a lot of personal preference, so I'm not necessarily going to knock it, is that in some shoes, Saucony likes to insert a hint of stability. It's something that they've been doing in a lot of their shoes for a long time, and you're still seeing that here. It was something that was in the 17 and in the 18 as well, and you're still seeing it here. Um, it's kind of in this area where I'm really feeling it, where there's this kind of like little island of outsole rubber, and I feel like this is an area that is not necessarily firmer, but uh, the way that the foam is sculpted, I just think that it doesn't kind of compress as much as some of the other areas of the shoe. So maybe I guess that means it is a little bit firmer of an area. Um, but for, to me, what it ends up feeling like as someone that doesn't like stability in their shoes or doesn't run in stability shoes, instead of like standing in the shoes, I felt like the shoes were kind of like kind of tilting me kind of to the side a little bit. That's what the hint of stability does to, for me. I think what it's intended to do is for people who when their ankles hit, maybe their ankles kind of cave in a little bit, maybe they're over pronating too much. Um, it's gonna prevent that over pronation from happening because it just won't compress the foam as much there. And so for some people, they're absolutely gonna love it. If you like stability shoes, or if you just like a little bit of stability, you want a mostly neutral shoe, but just a little bit of stability in there, you're gonna love this feature. For me, it's a feature that kind of turns me off a little bit. It's definitely there, I can feel it. Um, I don't love it, but again, I think that's gonna be highly preference dependent, so I'm not necessarily going to knock it because it's not something that I personally like. This shoe is gonna be coming out on July 15th. That is going to be the release date at a price of $150. So the question then becomes, do you pick up a pair of the Triumph 18 or the Triumph 19? The Triumph 18, I think, can be found at some pretty substantial discounts right now. And I would say, depending on how deep of a discount you're getting, maybe the Triumph 18 is the way to go, even though it is a heavier shoe and it is a hotter shoe. If there's only a little bit of a discount, I would probably, and if you can wait for it, wait for the Triumph 19 to come out because I really enjoy the changes that they've made to the upper. For me, it makes a big deal and I'm not normally a huge stickler on uppers, but especially when it comes to these max cushion shoes that are trying to do a little bit more of the daily training, I feel like losing weight, taking out some of the excess puffiness, which to me doesn't really add that much to the comfort anyway, taking all those things out really improves the experience for me. So I'm really looking forward to logging some more miles that hint of stability thing aside, but overall I'm looking forward to spending more time in this Triumph 19. Those are my thoughts on the Triumph 19 after just this first run so far. Hit the subscribe button so you can see updates about this shoe as I put more miles in it and start comparing it to some other shoes in my rotation. And that way you'll be able to know when those videos hit. If you have any questions about the shoe, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. And you can always ask me anything you like there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?